And we're also here in celebration of National Poetry Month, so this is a great event to kick that off. Am I loud enough? I'm going to read one poem. It's called For the Living Dead. It's in uh, several parts here. I rise with an effort. I feel the dead. They vibrate in my foggy heart like icebergs colliding in oceans of blood. I am alone. I sit by my window. I become a stone. Like stagnant water or steady drumming, I was once a prisoner too. I hear again the familiar beat inside my heart, the divine rhythm of the countless dead, the rainstorms of light. The zombies are revolting. They are crude in their culinary habits, eating the flesh of the living, raw with no seasoning. Duly elected representatives with secret term limits. Sound the alarm. The flesh eaters are in the house. They are slow, but they keep on coming. They are mesmerized by fireworks. They like to run amok when they aren't milling aimlessly. Zombies have no sex lives. They share the despair of the wolf man, drunk on power beneath the full moon. Soaked in gasoline, waiting for a light, inflamed by love and hate, counting down to the final insult. A cipher falls dead in the snow from a bus of discontinued androids. Last year's models, obsolete versions of absolute ideals polished to insane shines that reflect the light that cannot be silenced. Jolly gunshots wound our pride. Armies of pleasure reap rewards of perfect cartoon murders. Buddhas smithereened by friendly fire, floating in rivers of polite bodies, joyfully waving their black flags. They are the human furniture. They are the living dish rags. They are the constant reminders they are the ruined fortresses, engorged on cloned flesh, fitted with artificial hearts. In the post-apocalyptic world, the zombies are loosely organized. With no zombie leader, they wander in random abandon, trying to play various musical instruments, but their rhythm is shot. A small group of human survivors still comb their hair and wear makeup, drooling and shuffling their feet, the zombies are mystified by the smallest, most subtle stimuli, but their haunted, bony faces never smile. In the land of the dead, if a zombie bites you, you become a zombie too. You become a soldier in the zombie army, sharing a goal with no sense of purpose, with an inner drive to obey. The red bird still sings in the green earth tree, in the airtight shopping mall, in the fenced-off arena, in shadows of tall buildings, and shacks of toothpicks. Robots built by zombies then put in charge. The doors are all locked, impervious to your meat cleavers, oblivious to your howls of pain, ungrateful for your sacrifices. We navigate by dead reckoning. Our options are greatly reduced. We search in vain for a way out. Disguised by decadent cosmetics, the sentries at the gate are drunk. When the invasion comes, they will die. What can we do? What do we know? We who are barely human. We who have broken the seventh seal. We who have left the gate open. We who have stolen the golden fleece. Now the ghosts swallow us. We sullenly celebrate their loss. Our eyes opened wide as greed. Our diamonds soaked in blood. The coldest heads prevail to organize the slaughter. Where have we been? What have we done? We mounted the final burial mound. We heard again the ancient last rites. We cloned sheep by the herd. We unleashed the living dead. The robots are in formation, speaking in unison. They all have the same face. Humorously humorless. They bow and scrape without relish or anguish. Robot malfunctions are inconvenient. Animated by artificial energy, their movements are spooky. Unaware of planned obsolescence or constant surveillance, they make good household servants. They make good food service workers. They don't mind piecework. 
Efficient and cost-effective prison guards, they know no fear. They don't need names. They don't have dreams. They don't throw temper tantrums. They're not ticklish. They don't itch much. They never need vacations. They don't get pregnant. They don't get drunk. They don't smoke. They don't eat or shit. They know not art. They hardly ever fart. A robot may be decommissioned when a better model is developed. Many of the latest prototypes are biodegradable. They utilize virtual fibers to simulate the naturally organic. The severed head of Orpheus screams among the ashes of ancestors, among the names carved into stone, in secret caves and hidden places, in tedious epics of doomed voyages to the edge of the world. Organic life is prone to rot. Wooden puppets become brittle. Formaldehyde replaces blood. When the machine rules over the maker of machines, which ones are the tools? Ghost lost before the body. Toy soldier left out in the rain. Hollow and impervious to pain. The pounding of robot feet grows louder by the parameter, drowning out the earth's heart. I feel the spirits of the dead. They explode like seed pods, a thousand downy spheres, doors that won't stay closed, locks meant to be broken, dandelions born in the wind. Beats of light drummed by spirits into the pulsating heart of sound, into the unsanctified dirt, out to the edges of space, through the wounded waters beyond the toxic pain of time. I hear the call of light through the mechanical darkness, through the marching shadows, through the neutral rocks, the stale bread that feeds the dreams of the anemic world. <laughs>